Hello, welcome to Web of Stories. My name is Melinda. Um, this is all about more books. So um, I was today is St. Patrick's Day and it's like 70 some degrees here in the Oregon area. I'm wearing my shenanigan shirt. I just got home from church. Um, and I was going to do this outside, but then A, I realized that I need my computer with me to do this one. And also B, my cat's being a pain and would just be annoying outside. I kept it. She'd want to come outside and then she'd just be annoying. So we're just going to stay inside and you might hear her yowl. But anyway, today um, I, I keep talking about how I have all these pre-orders. So I decided I was actually going to go through all my pre-orders that I currently have with y'all. Um, so let's start with one that's not a pre-order. First of all, yes, I have another book for uh, my book haul that didn't make it. Um, I have Bad Cree by Jessica Johns. My bookish best friend gave me her copy. She finished. Um, if you saw my book haul or my uh, weekly wrap up, I talked about how book of the month gave me like two boxes, like two identical boxes. So she took all of my extra ones because they didn't want them back. So she took one, the, my duplicate set and then she gave me this. So I didn't pay for it, but it goes. So yeah, another book. <laughs> and I've been wanting to read this one for a long time. So and this is a Canadian copy too. So ooh, she's got dual citizenship. Um, so yeah, one more book for the book haul for this month. But now let me go through my pre-orders. And the first one I, I have already mentioned because on my update, I said I had gotten another book and that's Cross Stitch by Jasmina Barrera. I am counting it here because I wasn't expecting this until April. It doesn't officially release until April 2nd. Um, but sometimes with especially books from a small publisher, if I order them through Bookshop, I get them a little early. So that's what happened here. Um, let me just read a little bit of the back so you know what it's about. Um, and I heard about this book from Sarah at Eyes on Indie. Um, actually, I, I don't I don't remember where I heard from all of these, but I think that a lot of them came from Sarah. <laughs> so. Anyway, this is translated from the Spanish. The author is Mexican, and it says, It was meant to be the trip of a lifetime. Mila, Citali, and Dahlia, childhood friends, now college-aged, leave Mexico City for the London of the Clash, for the London of the Clash and the part and the Paris of Gustave Courbet. They anticipate the bookstores, cafes, and crushes, but not the realization that they are steadily, inevitably growing apart. That feels like forever ago. Mila, now a writer and a new mother, has just published a book on needlecraft, an art form long dismissed as women's work. After hearing that her old friend Sitlali Sit 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 has drowned, Mila begins to reminisce about their years together for the first time since becoming a wife and mother. What has become of all the nights the three friends spent embroidering together in silence? Did she miss the signs that Sitlali Sit needed help? So that one, as I said, pre-ordered came early. The next book that I have on pre-order is supposed, it has a publication date of uh, um, April 16th, and that is A Kind of Madness by Uche Okonkwo. Um, I will read a little bit of this from Goodreads. This is a searing, unflinching collection of stories set in Nigeria that explores themes of community expectations, familial strife, and the struggle for survival. So it's another short story collection. You know I cannot resist a short story collection. So that one is coming out in on April 16th. Who knows when it will arrive at my house, but there you go. Okay, my next book is called The Last Word and it is the it's by Ellie Griffiths. It re, and it's the fourth book in her Harbinger Car series or Quar. Um it releases on April 23rd. This is a really interesting series from her. Um I'm not entirely sure what to think about it. The first book was The Stranger Diaries, which I actually really enjoyed. Um, and But the inspector, Harbinger Carr, in that book was very much a secondary character. The The people who were kind of involved in the crime are, are much more central, and that was fine. And then the second book, which was The Postscript Murders, you have Harbinger Carr a little bit more towards the center, but then they introduce this other fun group of people who are sort of co-amateur investigators. And I really liked that because I liked that group. And then you have the third book, which was Bleeding Heart Yard, where they leave Brighton, that's where this takes place, and move to London, and it's all Harbinger Carr. And if it hadn't been part of the series, it probably would have been an excellent novel. But because I already had settled into sort of the format of the series, and I had met these characters that I really liked in the previous book who were not there, I, I, I found the third book very disappointing just from a series standpoint. 
So the fourth book is The Last Word. Now, I don't know if this is the, the end of a series. I do know that she is coming out with a new series in 2025, um, but I don't know if she's continuing the Harbinger Car series. The Last Word makes it sound like she is not. Uh, but in this one, we go back to uh, Natalka and Edwin, who are two people that we met in the Proscript murder. So we're back in Brighton. In any case, I personally have good luck with Ellie Griffiths, and I am looking forward to reading this one, and I pre-ordered it like that. Then also releasing on April 23rd, I have A Body Made of Glass by Carolyn Crampton. If you don't know, Carolyn Crampton is the host of the She Done It podcast, which is the podcast for which Leandra, Leandra works. If you watch Leandra the TBR Zero, that's her podcast she works on and she has appeared on it. Um, and this is a memoir. Um, let me read a little bit of this. Part cultural history, part literary criticism, and part memoir. A Body Made of Glass is a definitive biography of hypochondria. Carolyn Crampton's life was up and upended at the age of 17 when she was diagno diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma, a relatively rare blood cancer. After years of invasive treatment, she was finally given the all clear, but being cured of the cancer didn't mean she now felt well. Instead, the fear lingered and she found herself always on the alert, braced for the signs that the illness had reemerged. This sounds really interesting to me. Um, I know people who have, let's say, hypochondria hypochondriacal tendencies. Um, so that sounds really interesting. I'm a little wary of this book though, because I do have my very close friend who is fighting cancer and she is fighting a lymphoma and it's serious. So I don't know if I'll be reading this book right away because I'm not sure I'm going to be in a place to read it, but I am excited to read it when the right time comes. And as I said, it's releasing in April, so you'll see it on my April haul. <laughs> And then finally, I think this is my, yes, my third book on April 23rd is Shakespeare, The Man Who Pays the Rent by Judy Dench. You do not know the self-restraint it took for me to order pre-order this from Bookshop and not order it from the UK and Blackwell's. Like huge restraint on my part. And I feel like you should all applaud me for that. But yes, this is... Um, it's written with conversations that Judy Dench had about her her professional career working with you know with Shakespeare's works, Shakespeare's plays. And we all know who Judy Dench is. We all know she's wonderful. We all know she's great in Shakespeare. So really looking forward to this. And you know, Shakespeare's on my mind these days. Um, I will probably read this. So I'm probably gonna read this in May because for my bard room, I take May and December off. So I might use this as kind of like a, a Shakespeare May thing. We'll see, but that also comes out. One of three books coming out on April 23rd. As of right now, I only have one book publishing in May that I have pre-ordered. And this one is The Story Game by, and I'm sorry, I'm gonna try my best with this, Shui Hui Tijoa. I'm gonna put the title right here. <laughs> Um, so this is a transcendent, proudly imaginative memoir that explores the complexities of sisterhood, the cost of expectation, and the power of storytelling to shape and ultimately repair a life. So I, can, I don't have any sisters. I have brothers, and they are much older than me. So my experience growing up was much more like having being an only child than being a youngest child. So um, I'm always interested to read about those sibling relationships that are so different from mine. So this one just really sounded interesting to me when I heard about it, which I think might have been from Sarah. I don't know. <laughs> I forgot to note where I got these. I just, I do remember this one was from Sarah because she talks about it a lot, but there you go. Um, so yeah, that is the only one that I have on pre-order that's coming out in May. So as of now, I have two books coming out in June. I've ordered two books that are coming out in June and they're both uh, being released on June 4th. The first is The Queen of Poisons, which is the third book in the Marlowe Murder Club series by Robert Thorogood. I actually really enjoy the series. It's always kind of paired with, understandably, but not fairly with the Thursday Murder Club series. Honestly, between the two of them, I prefer this one a little bit, but um, I am really looking forward to reading this one. I'll read a little bit of the beginning, a little bit of the synopsis, excuse me. Jeffrey uh, Lushington, mayor of Marlowe, dies suddenly during a town council meeting when traces of aconite, also known as the Queen of Poisons, are found in his coffee cup. The police realize he was murdered, but who did it and why? 
The police bring Judith, Susie, and Bex in to investigate a civilian advisor's right from the start. So they have free reign to interview sub suspects and follow the evidence to their heart's content, which is perfect because Judith has no time for rules and standard procedure. <laughs> but this case has the Marlowe Murder Club stumped. Who would want to kill the affable mayor of Marlowe? How did they even get the poison into his coffee? And is anyone else in danger? The Marlowe Murder Club are about to face their most difficult case yet. That sounds like a lot of fun. So I'm really looking forward to that one. And the second book I have releasing that I have ordered on June 4th is Fire Exit by Morgan Talty. I still have Night of the Living Res on my, my bookshelf to read. I keep trying, like, I'm going to read it in November. I'm going to read it this, and I, I haven't gotten to it yet. So maybe I should set a goal to read it before this book comes out. But uh, let's see if I can read a little bit of what this is. Oh, um... The blood that came out of me was blood that ran through her veins. It's strange. All blood looks all blood looks the same, yet it's different, we're told, in so many various ways and for so and for so many various reasons. But one thing is for certain, I thought, you are who you are, even if you don't know it. From the porch of his home, Charles Lamosway has watched the life he might have he might have had unfold across the river on Maine's Penobscot Reservation. On the far bank, he caught brief moments of his neighbor Elizabeth's life, from the day she came home from the hospital to her early twenties. But there's always been something deeper and more dangerous than the river that divides him from her and the rest of the tribal community. Um, and I'm going to stop there because I think the next part might be a spoiler. <laughs> but I am looking forward to that. As I, 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 I'm not. I thought I heard somewhere that there might be a tie with Night of the Living Res, which is why I feel like I kind of have to read that one first. I could be wrong about that. I could be mixing that up with the new Tommy Orange because I do know that there is there is a connection between there there and Wandering Souls. So we'll see. Okay, let's go to July. Releasing on July 2nd is a book. It's actually already out, but this is the paperback release. And this is Temple Folk by Aliyah Balal. I've been really interested in this book for a long time. Um, so I thought a paperback would be a good time to pick it up. Um, seeing how it was coming out in the relatively near future. And this is a groundbreaking debut collection portraying the lived experiences of Black Muslims grappling with faith, family, and freedom in America. And that sounds really interesting to me. Um, this book is shortlisted for the Aspen Words Prize. I did a short about that just recently. Um, so I'm not going to be able to read it because it doesn't come out before then. The paperback doesn't before the prize is announced, but I'm still going to be reading it. So <laughs> that one is coming up. On July 16th, I have Smother Moss by Elisa Allering. I had to look there. Um, this is a haunting and imaginative and twisting tale of two sisters and the menacing, unexplained forces that threaten them in their rural mountain community. Uh, so this is a gothic thriller, uh, and it's set in 1980s Appalachia, which sounds really interesting. So I'm hoping there's a lot of local color in this. Um, Appalachia has been kind of like hot setting for books lately. Uh, yeah, it does. Let me read a little bit more of this. <laughs> In 1980s Appalachia, life isn't easy for Sheila. She endures relentless taunting and bullying at the hands of her classmates. She takes care of her great aunt, the garden and home, and the rabbits, and forages for mushrooms in the forest, all while her mother works long, back-breaking shifts at the nearby state asylum. But it's her peculiar little sister, Angie, who worries her the most. Angie is obsessed with nuclear war, Rambo, zombies, a Russian invasion of their community, and the ominous tarot-like cards that she creates that somehow speak to her. So kid of the 80s. Um, as if all that weren't enough, Sheila feels an unexplained weight around her neck. Is it the ancient and strange mountain that they live they live on that casts its shadow on her or something else unknown, unseen? So it sounds a little like borderline horror. So it sounds like a lot of fun. Um, sounds like a good summer read. Again, don't know where I heard about this book. Um... So I actually, I do kind of know because I, I see it's put out by Tin House Books. And recently I did go on Tin House and like see what was coming in order a bunch. So that's where I, could, I figured out where that one came from. <laughs> and then on July 18th, and I did double check that why I had a July 16th and a July 18th. In the United States, books tend to always publish on Tuesdays. But uh, on July 18th, I have The Trouble with Mrs. Montgomery Hearst by Booktube's own Katie Lumsden. Um, I think if you aren't familiar with that, I will actually put a card up um, to, of her little video introducing it because I do feel that she does better than me just reading 
what it says on Goodreads. But uh, very looking looking forward to this one very much. It's, it sounds like it's going to be quite a bit different from her first book, which was The Secrets of Hartwood Hall, which I did really enjoy. This one's that was very Brontean. This one sounds a little more Austinian. So we'll see. I have three books coming out in August. I do not have three books coming out in August. I have pre-ordered three books coming out in August. The first one is another short story collection. It's called Mystery Lights by Lena Valencia. And it is set against the stark background of the Southwestern desert. Um, I'm you, As you see this video, I will be in the Southwestern desert because I'm setting this up to film when I'm in Arizona. So there you go. Short stories, place I know, gonna read it. <laughs> That's, I don't I don't know anything about this author. I don't know if she it does not look like she's this is a debut. It looks like this is a sophomore book. Um but it is horror short stories, so that should be fun. It might be one that I hold on to until October though. Then the next two, I don't have to even look up on Goodreads. And uh, the next one comes out on August 20th. And that is Spirit Crossing by William Kent Kruger. If you did not think William Kent Kruger was on this list, then you don't know me. Because, of course, I pre-order his books the minute they're announced. <laughs> this is the 20th book, I believe, in the Cork O'Connor series. Don't know what it's about. Don't care. I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it the day it comes in. I'm going to clear my schedule to read this book. Um, that's that's how I do William Ken Kruger. And that's also how I do another author who will be showing up on here. So um, I am getting a digital copy of that. So with William Ken Kruger, I get the print copies of his standalones and the digital copy of his series. Um, I think that I just got into the Cork O'Connor series late enough that it didn't make sense to go back and try to start getting print copies of it, um, especially if I want them to kind of look uniform. Uh, so I, I, I've just been getting the Kobo editions of that. However, I gave the first book, Iron Lake, to my father-in-law for Christmas, and he loved it. So I hope he doesn't watch this video, because guess what he's getting next Christmas? He's getting book two. <laughs> so, and then on um, August 29th, I have Janice Hallett's next book, The Examiner. I am ordering this from Blackwell, so I do not think it will be available in the United States until later. But Janice Hallett is an autobi author for me from the UK. Like, I get the UK publication books. So it's it's always really hard then because then I read it. Like, I'm so happy that now I can talk to everyone about the mysterious case of the Alperton Angels, even though I read it over a year ago. But no one else in the United States that I know of did because it was has was just now released here. So um, yeah, I can't wait when it comes to Janice Hallett. I don't know what this is about. I purposely didn't look. So if you want to know what it's about, you can look that up, but I don't want to know. So <laughs> the less I know about I, Janice Hallett is so delightful and she has very complex, very complex puzzle mysteries. And what's really interesting is I heard an interview with her as far as a writing style, she's a pantser. She does not plan this out. She just, I'm like, that just floored me because they're so complex. But I like kind of going into hers blind. So I'm not going to look up to see what it's about. I just know I'm going to buy it and order it right away. So, so I only have, I've only pre-ordered one book that releases in September as of now. <laughs> And it comes out on September 17th, and it is Alice Hoffman's new book. It's called When We Flew Away, a novel of Anne Frank before the diary. I don't need to read the synopsis about it. You just know what it's about right there. She's, she's talking about Anne Frank. Um, so that's an upper. <laughs> I don't know how far she's going to go into it. I think in this particular case, she does not need to give us Anne Frank's entire life. I think if she, we'll see how it does it. But I think this could be a perfectly successful book if she ends it when they go into hiding because I just think that would work well. But I have a lot of confidence in Alice Hoffman. Now I know The Invisible Hour was not a book that worked for many people. Um, probably most people it did not work for. It worked for me just because it, it, it was it was Scarlet Letter, Nathaniel Hawthorne fan fiction, and I'm here for that. But <laughs> there you go. Um, so I'll be interested to see how this goes, but I'm definitely, you know, Alice Hoffman is another autobiography author for me. I don't need to go into the thing because it's about Anne Frank before the diary. So there, it's all right there in the title. And then let me see if we go back to here. Oh, 
The Man in Black by Ellie Griffith. So this comes out, this is one of two books that come out in October. This is a collection of short stories. I am not sure if these are all Ruth Galloway short stories. I do know that The Man in Black is a Ruth Galloway short story because I have been trying to find it for a long time. And it was one of those that was sort of a promotional thing that you, I guess you got it in like a certain edition of one of her books if you bought it from a certain store in the UK or something like that. I don't know, but I'm very happy to hear that now it's going to be available to everybody. Um, but yeah, I don't know if this is just Ruth Galloway, but there is at least a Ruth Galloway short story collection in this. And I cannot really, I cannot uh, resist Ellie Griffiths and I cannot resist short stories. So duh, of course I was going to get this book. And then on October 29th, it's happening. You thought Spirit Crossing with William Camp Kruger. Yeah, I cleared the day off. October 29th is cleared off. I, like all, I've already planned. I'm not doing anything October 29th except reading The Gray Wolf by Louise Penny. There you go. Now, this is also, I'm getting this on Kobo. The way I do Louise Penny is when books are first released, I get them on Kobo so I can read them. Like sometimes I start at midnight <laughs> and just read them. Um, and then when they come out on paperback, because I came into her series after it, it had been established, and at that point you could really only get paperbacks. Um, once it comes out in paperback, I will buy a print copy for my shelf. But uh, yeah, I have Louise Penny and William Ken Kruger and Alice Hoffman on here, so big year. Now I also have one book that's on back order, so it has been released. I am still waiting for Bookshop to get me a copy, and that book is called Kisat Stories by Palestinian Women. That just sounded really interesting to me. Um, Palestinian women. That's what it's about. I think this is a great time to read those stories. I don't know what the status of it is with bookshop.org. I've had it on hold for quite, I mean, I've had it on back order for quite some time. It is still an active order. So I am still assuming that I will get it at some point. I have a lot of short story collections to work through. So I'm not really in a rush, but it is something that I still have on here. So there you go. Those are uh, 18 books. Well, 17 if you take cross stitch off that I am waiting for. And uh, yeah, there will probably be more coming because I have, you know, I, unless you couldn't tell, I don't have a lot of self-control when it comes to buying books. And I have even less when it comes to pre-ordering books because it doesn't feel like buying books because you don't actually get the book when you order it. It just shows up later, like magic. So uh, yeah, I did feel because I always say like I have pre-orders coming. I should at least tell you what I have on pre-order. So there you go. Anyway, what, what um, upcoming release are you excited about? Do I need to put it on pre-order? Let me know. Let me know down below if there is something that has not yet been published that you're excited about that you think maybe I should think about pre-ordering because the likelihood is I probably will. Um, so down there below. <laughs> Thank you. Like, subscribe, join my Discord. I'll see you in the next video.